Hamlin Towns in Brunswick, by famous Hanover City. The river bays are deep and wide, washes its ward in the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied. But when begins my duty, almost five hundred years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from burning was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats, and bit the babies in the cradles, and ate the cheeses out of the vats, and licked the soup in the cook's own ladles, split in the kegs of salted splats, made nests inside men's Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's straps by drowning their speaking, with shrieking and squeaking and fifty different sharps and flats. At last the people in the body to the town wall came flocking, Tis clear, cried they, our mayor's a noddy, and as for our corporation, shocking, to think we buy gowns and line with them, for dogs that can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope, because they're old and obese, to find in a furry civic robe ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking, to find the remedy we're lacking, or sure as fate will send you packing. At this the mayor and corporation quaked with a mighty constellation. And now they sat to counsel, at length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder I had my ermine gown sell, I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one's rack one's bay, and I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratched it so, and all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap! Just as he said this, what should happen at the chamber door but a gentle tap? Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation looking little as he'd sat, though wondrous fat, nor brighter than his eye, nor moist than a too long to open the oyster, save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous, or plate of turtle, ream and glutinous. Only a scraping of shoes at the mat, anything like the sound of a rat, makes my heart go pit a pat. Come in, the quiet and the mayor cried, looking bigger. And in did come the strangest figure. Its queer long coat from heel to head was half of yellow, and half of red. And he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes, each like a pin, and light used hair, yet swarthy skin. No tapped on cheek, nor braid on chin, but lips where smiles from out and in. There was no guessing his kith and kin, and nobody could enough admire the tall man in his quaint attire. Quoth one, it has my great grandchild stopping up at the edge of tombstone, and walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced to the council table, and, Please, your honours, said he, I am able by means of a secret charm to draw all creatures living beneath the sun that creep or swim or fly or run after me so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mould and toad and newt and viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they noticed round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match of his coat of a self-same check, and at the scarf's end hung a pipe, and his fingers, they noticed, were ever straying, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe, as low a daggled over his vesture, so old fangled. Yet, said he, poor piper as I am, in tartary I freed the charm last June from its huge swarms of gnats. I eased in Asia the nizam of a monstrous brood of vampire bats, and as for what your vein bewilders, if I can rid your town of rats, will you give me a thousand guilders? One? Fifty thousand was the exclamation the astonished mayor and corporation. Into the street the piper stepped, smiling first, the little smile, as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe the while. Then, like a musical adept, to blow the pipe his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled and ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered you heard as if an army muttered and the muttering grew to a rumbling and the rumbling grew to a mighty rumbling and out of the houses the rats came tumbling Great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, grey rats, tawny rats, grave old plodders, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and picking whiskers, families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the piper for their lives. From street to street they piped advancing, and step for step they followed dancing, until all came to the river vaser, wherein all plunged and perished. 
Save one who stout as Julius Caesar swam across and lived to carry and see the manuscript he cherished to whack land home as commentary, which was. At the first shrill notes of the pipe, I heard a sound as of scraping tripe and putting apples one was ripe into a side of Mrs. Grep and moving away of pickle cut boards and the moving a jar of conserve cupboards and a training Drawing the cart corks of train flasks and breaking the hoops of butter casks. And it seemed as if a voice, sweeter by far than my harp, or by sultry as breathed, called out, O oh, rats, rejoice! The world has grown to one vast dry sultry. So manchon, crunchon, take your nanchon, get for supper, dinner, lanchon. And just as a sparky sugar punch and all made his stave, like a great shanchon, glory scarce an inch before me, just as me thought it said, come for me, I found the vase of bowling o'er me. You should have heard the family Hamlin people ringing the bells when they walked the steeple. Go, cried the mayor, and get long poles, poke up their nests, block up the holes, consult with carpenters and builders, and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats. When suddenly, up the face of the piper perch in the marketplace with a first, if you please, my thousand guilders. A thousand guilders? The mayor looked blue. So did the corporation too. The council dinners made of air havoc was claret, moselle, van de Graaf, hock, and half the money would replenish their cellar's biggest butt with Rhenish. To pay this sum to a wandering fellow, with the gypsy go to red and yellow. Besides, quoth the mayor with a knowing wink, our business was done at the river's brink. We saw with our eyes the vermin sink, and what's there can't come to life, I think. So, friend. We're not the first to shrink, shrink from the duty of giving you something to drink and a matter of money to put in your poke. But as for the gilders, what we spoke of them, as you very well know, was in joke. Besides, our losses have made us thrift. A thousand gilders? Come, take fifty. The piper's face fell and he cried, No trifling, I can't wait beside. I promised to visit by dinner time bad dad, and accept the pine of the head cook's pottage, all his witching by having less than the cage's kitchen of a nest of scorpions no survivor. With him I prove no bargain driver with you. Don't think I'll beg to stiver. And folks who put me in a passion may finally pipe after another fashion. Once more he stepped to How, the cried the mayor. mayor. Do you think I'd be being worse treated than a cook? Insulted by lazy ribald with idle pipe and vestry pipe. You threaten us, fellow, do your worst, blow your pipe there till he burst. Once more he stepped into the street and lay to his lips again his um, pipe of smooth straight cane. An air th and uh, he, he blew three, three notes. notes, such sweet, soft notes, as yet musicians cunning never gave the enraptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling of merry crowds pitching and jostling, small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping, little tongues chattering, and like fowls in a farmyard where barley is scattering, out came the children, running, all the little boys and girls with rosy cheeks and flecks and curls, and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls, tripping and skipping bang merrily after the wonderful music with shouting and laughter. The mayor was dumb. And the council stood this as if they'd be changed into blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry to the children merrily skipping by, could only follow with the eye that joyous crowd to the piper's back. But how the mayor was on the back, and the wretched council's bosoms beat, and the piper turned from the high street to where the bays of old its waters, right in the way of their sons and daughters. However, he turned from e uh, south, south to and west. west, and to Coppenberg Hill he steps addressed. And after him the children fest. Breach was the joy in every vest. He never can cross that mighty top. He's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see our children stop. When, lo, as they reached the mountain side, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if the cabin was so sandy hollow, and the piper advanced, and the children followed, until we're in the very last, the door of the mountain side shut fast. Did I say it all? No. One was lame, and could not dance the whole of the way. And in after years, if you would blame his sadness, he was used to say, It's dull in our town since my playmates left. 
I can't forget that I bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, that the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town just at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees blew, and flowers put forth a fairer hue, and everything was strange and new. There the sparrows of white and peacocks here, and the dogs out by our fellow deer. And honey bees had lost their sting, and horses were born with eagle's wings. And just as I became assured, my lame foot would be speedily cured. The music found myself up, um, outside the, the hill, hill, and left alone against my will. Um, to go and now limping uh, as uh, before, before. never hail that country more. Alas, alas, a hand for handling. There came into many a burgers plate a text which says that heaven's gate opes to the rich at its easy rate as the needle's eye takes camel in. But when they the prepared to east, west, north and south to offer the piper by word of mouth, wherever it was when's mort to find him, silver and gold to his heart contented he'd only return the way he went and bring the children behind him. But when they saw it was lost endeavour, and piper and dancers were gone for ever, they made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly, if after the day of the month and year, these words did not as well appear. And so long after what happened here, on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better of the memory me to true... Six. To... The place of the, the children's last retreat, they called it Pied Piper Street. Where everyone, where anyone playing a pipe or taper was sure for the future to lose his labour, nor suffered his hostelry or tavern could start with a street so solemn. But also, but opposite the place of the column, uh, they um, wrote right. the story on a column, and in the great church window painted the same, to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away. And there it stands to this very day. And I must not omit to say that in Transylvania there is a tribe of alien people who ascribe um, the outlandish ways and dress to which their neighbours lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterranean prison uh, which they mm. were to plan long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin town in Brunswick land. But how or why, they don't understand. So, Willie, let me and you be wipers of scores out with all men especially pipers. And whether they pipers free from rats or from mice, if we promise them all, let us keep our promise.